trouble melts like lemon drops High above the chimney top, that's where you find me, oh, somewhere over the rainbow, bluebirds fly, and the dream that you did to, oh, why, oh, why can't I? them bloom for me and you and I think to myself what a wonderful world well I see skies of blue and I see clouds of white and the brightness of day I like the dark and I think to myself the colors of the rainbow so pretty in the sky are also on the faces of people passing by i see friends shaking and singing how do you do What a wonderful world. world Someday I wish upon a star Wake up where the clouds are far behind Be where trouble melts like a lemon drops High above the chimney top that's where
To my love, took it down. I climbed a mountain and I turned around, and I saw my reflection in snow-covered hills till the landslide brought me down. Oh, mirror in the sky, what is love? Can the child? In my heart rise above Can I sail through the changing ocean tides Can I handle the seasons of my life
I hope the days come easy and the moments pass slow And each road leads you where you want to go And if you're faced with a choice and you have to choose I hope you choose the one that means the most to you And if one door opens to another door closed I hope you keep on walking till you find the window If it's cold outside Show the world the warmth of your smile But more than anything More than anything My wish for you Is that this life becomes All that you want it to Your dreams stay big Your worries stay small You never need to carry more than you can hold And while you're out there getting where you're getting to I hope you know somebody loves you And wants the same thing You never forget all the ones who love you in the place you left. I hope you always forgive and you never regret. And you help somebody every chance you get. Oh, you find God's grace in every mistake and always give more than you take. But more than anything, yeah, more. How about now? I'll take, I take it that's better. <laughs> All right. All right, where was I? Well, I was talking about crisis revealing culture. How appropriate. Well, the class of 2020 has experienced two moments of crisis that revealed our true school culture. The first took place in the spring of 2019, just a year ago when for about 20 minutes, we went into lockdown, believing there was an active shooter in the building. It turned out not to be the case, but it was about 7.50 in the morning, a pretty hectic time in any school that could have led to chaos. Instead, our training kicked in and our teachers responded in the exact way I would hope my own children's teachers would respond, with conviction, confidence, care, and compassion. And our students, led by the class of 2020, responded in the exact way I would hope my own child would, listening to those in charge, 
looking out for one another, and making sure everyone was safe. Revealed in those moments was what any teacher or parent would hope for, a culture of trust, respect, and responsibility. And the second crisis continues to this day. Who knew that Friday, March 13th, would be the last day students would be at school? It seemed unimaginable at that time. And everything happened so quickly. We left school on Friday. By Monday, schools were closed. And on Wednesday, we were in full remote learning. I remember that first morning wondering, will our technology work? Will teachers be able to meet with their students online? Will students even show up? So many questions and unknowns. And what happened was so revealing of our school culture. Of 350 students, only 15 were absent that day. Every teacher was up and running with Google Classrooms and Google Meetings. We Apollo 13 this situation and never looked back, revealing our culture of flexibility, perseverance, concern, and learning. So today, we celebrate our class of 2020, who for the past four years have nurtured and developed a school culture that will endure long after they're gone. I'm proud of this community for supporting our schools, students, and teachers. I'm proud of our teachers for getting into this profession because they love working with teenagers. I'm proud of this class because they care about each other and persevere and I'm proud to be your principal. Thank you. It's working, all right. At this time, I would ask RSU 26 School Superintendent Meredith Higgins and Orono High School Dean of Students, Samantha Runco, to assist me in the presentation of diplomas. So seniors, we weren't able to practice marching or explain how to wear your cap and gown, or your tassel. So right now, your tassel, that thing that hangs off your cap, that should be on the right side of your cap. And after we're done with this and everyone has their diploma, we're gonna, I'm gonna ask you to move it over to the left side all at the same time. All right, here's how this will work. Miss Espling, Coach Espling, over here on my left, she's one of our parking bosses. She'll dismiss one row of cars at a time to proceed to the stage area. Ms. Runko will signal when the graduate should exit the car and proceed on stage to receive their diploma. They'll be on the table as well as a flower. Graduates, you may remove your mask while on stage and for pictures. Uh, so on stage, pick up your diploma holder and a flower Please note that your actual diplomas will be mailed home to you next week. They're not here today. We didn't know what order we'd be presenting, so we're going to mail them home next week. Also note that Monty Rand Photography is here. He's going to take a, an official picture, and information about purchasing will be emailed home to you. Drivers, after you let off your graduate, uh, Ms. Runko will help you, but you'll proceed to this side of the stage pick up your graduate, and then drive around to your original parking spot. All right. If you have your tickets, please have your tickets ready. This is how we know to, the order of names. Everybody ready? All right. All right. Let's do this. Ms. Espling. First will be our student speakers who are selected by their classmates to speak today. They could both come down. We have Itai Boss and then Eva White. You're good to go, Itai. It's on and everything. Check, check. Can everyone hear me? Awesome. All right. Good morning, parents, staff, and fellow students, and welcome to the first and maybe only drive through graduation here in Orno, Maine. This graduation will not be the same as it has always been. It won't be the same boring McDonald's meal you order every time, the double quarter pounder with cheese. This graduation will be more like ordering a Happy Meal. The toy could be great, or it could not be there at all, but it's what we make out of it. I'm not going to lie to you. 
At first, when I was asked to speak here today, I was apprehensive. I had no idea what it was like to talk to a group of cars. Although I guess now I no longer have to worry about making eye contact with you all. But how am I supposed to know if my terrible jokes and references are falling flat if you're all sitting in the car with the, win with the windows rolled up? <laughs> to start off, I would just like to thank the administration and everyone who worked so hard to make this graduation even possible. To all of the faculty who organized every detail of this event, to the parents who helped us fundraise the past four years, we thank you. Let's give them a big honk of applause. To my friends in the class of 2020, this is for you all. Many of us did not think we would have a graduation today. In fact, at times, many of us were not even sure we would graduate at all. Now we can kick back and relax and finish watching everything on Amazon Prime, Netflix, and Hulu for the second time. But what got us through these four years? For people like Willem and Jackson, it was Muse Pasta Club and Roaming the Halls. For Katie, Rachel, Leah, and Xander, and so many of you, it was show choir and musicals. And for others like me and Maddie, it was the family dog. I know, shameless plug. Yet somehow we still managed to graduate. I'm sure in September, none of us thought this is how we would be graduating, sitting in a warm car for two hours crammed with our beloved family members. But it's not as bad as everyone thinks. Although it looks like a wrench has been thrown into our plans, think about this. Maybe now is the time to reimagine life after high school. Why should we do what everyone has been telling us to do? After all, we're young and things are already changing. We now have the opportunity to go off on our own. Who needs to go to high school, uh, to college and get a nine to five when we could be making millions off of TikTok? Talking to you, Matt. But seriously, now that there's no certainty on what we'll all be doing next year, maybe instead of going to Bowdoin, Tucker might tour the country doing flips off the biggest waterfalls in the US. Or maybe Catherine will decide to through hike the Arizona Trail or Jane will become YouTube famous. Our possibilities are limitless. There'll be some constants. George will keep flying airplanes, and Sam's mom will continue making a killer chicken casserole. Mr. K will carry on destroying kids at badminton, and there will always be Mr. Arnold counting his daily puns. But things will quickly change in all our lives. Soon, Maggie and Patrick won't be around to remind me of the homework, and Sam and Alex will no longer bust me around. Who knows where Jacob or Zach or Adrian will be in five years? I know Iris will probably be the first one of us to make millions, and Anna might be the first one of us to visit all seven continents. I could keep imagining the possibilities for all of you, but my time here is almost up. So let's come back to the idea of the Happy Meal. The toys in the bag are the opportunities this strange situation has given us, and now we can make something out of it. Are you going to look at them as the ruins of an old tradition, or the start of something new? It's up to you all. You've done extraordinary things these past four years, and as I've been saying, new opportunities lie ahead. Seize this chance. Chase your goals even if you don't yet know what they are. Make something out of the Happy Meal. I know that you all are the people to do just that. Thank you, good luck, and don't forget to fill your gas tank with high octane dreams. Our next speaker is Eva White. Can you take this? <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> My name is Eva White, and I'm very honored to be speaking in front of you all today. As I think about what it means to be a part of the class of 2020, the very first thing I think about is how I'm currently standing in front of a class that has been screwed over more times than there are people in it. Freshman year, freshman year we had to deal with the tragic realization that we would never take a history class with Mr. Cowan or experience high school band with Mr. Hodgson. Sophomore year, we ran cross country practice and the mile in PE, terrified that a clown would come out of the woods and attack us. Junior year started with a distinct lack of sarcastic comments from Claire Moriarty and ended with a district wide lockdown that we're all still recovering from. And senior year, well, we all know how that turned out. So before I go any further, I would just like to acknowledge the fact that we did it. We made it here, and we made it here together. 
congratulations, class of 2020. Now, I can stand here and spin you all a tale of woe and heartbreak and fear, loss. I can make it seem like to get to this stage, we had to cross the seven seas with only a square of bubble wrap to keep us afloat. But if I did that, it would be like I was painting the most beautiful sunset you've ever seen using only varying shades of gray. I cannot stand here and talk about the class of 2020 by only speaking to the challenges we have faced and the terrible things that have happened to us. Sometimes bad things happen. We are not defined by the list of obstacles we've had to fight on our way to get here today. We are defined by the way we choose to deal with those challenges and by the way that we help others through them. We are not defined by the money we raised for our senior trip, but rather by the time we spent working together solving the problem that was our very empty bank account. We are not defined by the amount of homework we did during our stint of online school, but by the fact that we showed up for each other when we were still mourning the loss of our last months together. We are not defined by the accolades our class has accumulated or by our average GPA. We are defined by the fact that we know the names of our school janitors. We are defined by the fact that from the moment we walk in the door a tiny bit late, we know whether or not Ms. Emerson is going to wave us through and save us from detention. We are defined by the volume of people that walked out of class during the climate strike. We are not the class that graduated during the pandemic. We are the class that refused to be painted in gray. We are the class that will leave a mark on the world that shines in the richest shades of the rainbow. Being in high school has taught us all a thousand lessons. It's taught us that even if you assemble an entire class during Muse and you teach them the YMCA dance and they all work to perfect it, even after everyone agreed it was stupid, you'll still lose the dance off to the seniors. It taught us that gym class is actually called PE and it taught us how to defend ourselves if Winnie ever heard us forget that. It taught us that when a teacher leaves, you'll miss them a lot, even if you didn't think you would. But the most important thing that our years at Orono have taught us is that we can find success and we can thrive in a world that seems at times like its only goal is to beat us down. Let that be a comfort to you, class of 2020. Let that voice in the back of your head tell you a thousand times over that you can't do it. And then after the self-doubt and insecurity have run their course, show that little voice that it's wrong. Do everything and more than you tell yourself you're capable of. Because if high school has taught us anything, it's that no one can tell us what we can't do. Thank you. Thank you, Eva. Next, the director of our international program, Erica Dixon, will come up to receive diplomas on behalf of two, our, two of our students who had to head back to their home countries during the pandemic. Fua Pak Lee and Yun J. O. And they're joining us live via FaceTime. A big shout out to Pak and Yun J. Thank, <laughs> Thank you, Erica.
And our next diplomas, Jackie Babcock. Jazzy Babcock. Jacob Farnham. Daniel Bushy. Aaron O'Brien. Patrick Tyne. Naomi Alamante. Riley Pearsall. <laughs> Andrew Grindle.
Reagan Reynolds. Samuel Oxier. Sophia Bilodeau. Emma Labrie. Riley Broad. Maggie Coots. Alicia Franklin. Ha, <laughs> ha, 
Madeline LeClaire. Madison Butterfield. Ella Cousineau. Xander Lanigan. <laughs> Alex Brown. <laughs> MJ Esto. <laughs> Josh Mihawk. Cassidy Climo. <laughs> Rachel Wingard.
Jacob January. Josh January. Now bear with us as this next row takes a lap to get in line. Here they come, making the turn. And they're in the home stretch. Nolan, maybe. Justin Bishop. <laughs> Nolan Moore. Allison Van Dees. Matt Tozier.
Tucker Ellis. Izzy McLean. <laughs> Izzy Baker. Jackson Campbell. <laughs> Jackson, Quack. <laughs> Dylan Halsey. Catherine Owen. Lucas Souza Cunha. <laughs> Lexi Dowling. Emma Fortier. <laughs> Megan Murray.
McKenna Steele. Isaiah Walker. Bam Gallipo. Krista Bass. Maddie Martin. Jane Rowe. Cal O'Neill. Hannah Perkins. <laughs> right, right up front.
Lainey Hepler. Samuel Henderson. Leah Rock. Joy Wasson. Catherine Butens. Damon Gallopo. Zach Murdoch. George Grindle. Dominic Farnham.
Jacob Pooler. Anna Neary. Willem Crane. Olivia Halza. Adrian Sakalexis. <laughs> Leah Potter. Bella Speed. <laughs> Louis Attian. Clarence Van Walsam. <laughs> Want to bring it down to him?
Adam Williams. Sean Sherman. Right, right over there. Iris Lee. Christopher Clement. Congratulations, graduates. We have a special guest speaker, the Honorable Angus King, United States Senator. I want to offer congratulations to the class of 2020 at Orono High School. I know this isn't the graduation you expected or the spring of your senior year that you expected. This has been a tough situation for everybody. And I do want to congratulate you for sticking with it for finishing high school, for the work that you've accomplished, and the world that you're going off to make a better place. I want to share a, a few thoughts with you today, uh, hopefully to provide a little guidance and maybe even some useful advice. I, I think my number one piece of advice is, as you face this new world, be willing to take some chances. And I don't mean dumb chances, you know, riding a motorcycle with beer on the back or, or uh, trying to see who can catch the coronavirus. No, no, I'm not talking about that. What I'm talking about is believe in yourself. Believe in what you can do and that maybe you can reach a little further than you think. I think one of the biggest things that holds us back in life is that little man that sits on our shoulder and says, you can't do that. You can do that. You can take chances, you can try, and even if you fail, that's okay. Did you ever stop and think that there's a multi-million dollar industry in this country putting erasers on pencils? That means it's okay to make a mistake. The great Wayne Gretzky, the great hockey player, once said, I miss 100% of the shots I don't take. Think about that for a minute. I miss 100% of the shots I don't take. So take your shots. Don't hold yourself back. Take the opportunities that life presents you, and I think you will find that you can go a lot further and do a lot more than you ever dreamed. Number two, when you're thinking about how you're approaching people and approaching life and approaching life after high school, let me just share something with you. Attitude really is everything. It really makes all the difference. I've hired a lot of people in my life and I don't think I've ever looked at anybody's grades or where they went to college or high school. I've looked at their attitude. Are they positive? Do they make eye contact? Do they have a plan? Are they looking forward? Are they excited about what's coming toward them? Attitude really is the whole deal. There's a funny little saying, it's your attitude and not your aptitude that determines your altitude. It's your attitude not your aptitude that determines your altitude. I'll give you a little quick story. Christmas morning, little boy's downstairs. He runs down there, all these presents under the tree. He's tearing them open. He looks at them all, and he looks up at his mother after he gets them all open. It's a big pile of presents. He says, is this all? The other kid 
is in a house, he comes down, there's nothing under the tree. He looks around in the living room and suddenly he's excited. He finds a little pile of horse manure and he's bouncing off the walls. He's, he's really fired up and his mother says, why are you so excited? He said, because I know there's a pony in here somewhere. That's attitude, you see, and that's what makes all the difference. Number three, whatever you're doing, be the best at it. Be the best that you can possibly do. This is particularly important for your first job. A lot of people say, well, my first job is, you know, I'm babysitting or I'm lifeguarding or I'm, you know, doing some farm work or whatever. It's not that big a deal. It is a big deal for a couple of reasons. Number one, get in the habit of doing your best. Number two, you're building up a series of recommendations that are going to make a lot of difference to you later on. Because if I'm hiring, if I'm thinking of hiring you and I call somebody and say, well, how did they do as a lifeguard? You say, well, you know, he was okay, but he really, he missed a lot of days and he, he wasn't here all the time. And he didn't seem to be paying attention. I'm going to listen to that. That's probably the most important piece of advice or piece of information I need in order to make that hiring decision. On the other hand, if the boss says, oh, yeah, she showed up early every day. She was here. She cleaned up. She did things she wasn't even asked to do. She was always paying attention and focus. That's the person I'm going to hire. So be the best that you can be no matter what the job is because you're always you're building up this record. And we're going to talk about reputation in a minute. You're building up a reputation for being capable and engaged and having a positive attitude. Number four, I talked about reputation. Be honest, even if it hurts. There's no virtue in stopping at a stop sign when there's a police officer at each corner. But be honest, even if it inconveniences you. Why? Well, number one, it's the right thing to do. But number two, you'll be building up a reputation, an image of a person who's honest and trustworthy. And that's really important because there'll be a time when you want people to trust you, when you want people to take you at your word. And if you tarnish that, if you get a reputation for not being honest, for not being straightforward, that'll haunt you. That'll, that'll go for years and years. It's something that's very hard to undo. In fact, it's, it's like, I don't know if any of you have ever worked in concrete. Concrete starts out really soupy and wet and easy. You can put your handprint in it. You can make a mark with it. But once it hardens, it takes a jackhammer to change it. And that's your image. You're building it right now. And what you build is going to be very hard to undo if, if, if you screw it up, if you're not honest, if you don't really care about other people and honoring your word. That's what I want you to remember. And, and it's, it's so important. Here's a little saying. You only have one opportunity to make a first impression. So make that first impression as somebody who's straightforward and honest. That will make a, whole, a huge difference in your life. The final point is, has to do with where we are now. Always value your friends and your family because when times are tough, they're all you're going to have. Everything you achieve in life can be taken away somehow with property and, and houses and motorcycles and all that kind of thing. But in the end, what you need and what you're going to want is people who are going to love you and look after you, but you have to love and look after them. So two or three years from now, if a classmate calls you and says, hey, I'm getting married in Chicago. It's really great. I hope you can come. You might say, oh, man, that's a long way and, and it's expensive and I don't know if I can afford the airfare. Go. Be there for them. Because you're going to want them to be there for you. The Beatles, if you don't remember the Beatles, know about the Beatles, Google them or ask your parents. But the Beatles put this really clearly in one of their songs. They said, the love you get is equal to the love you give. The love you get is equal to the love you give. So value your friends and families and never let them down. Those are some things that I hope will help you as you leave in this very strange year. 
And as you go out into life in, in Maine and in the country to do great things, you will do great things. I believe it. And I just want to wish you again, congratulations and Godspeed. Thank you, Senator King. Finally, seniors, if you're ever wondering how to succeed in whatever you're doing, whether it's college, the military, work, parenthood, anything really, it's a simple recipe for success. Just show up on time, work hard with a good attitude, have some fun, and of course, keep it real. So normally right now you would have a class marshal that helps you move those tassels from the right to the left. But I'm going to do my best to, to help you with that. So on the count of three, move that tassel from your right side over to your left side. One, two, three. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pleasure that I present to you Orono High School's Class of 2020. Let's hear it. Now, you are about to take part in the largest motorcade procession ever in Orono, Maine. We're going to have a, a procession down Rangeley Road, traffic circle down Park Street, Main Street, and uh, we'll just, we won't have a gathering at the end. We're going to follow the parking attendants. We'll dismiss from that side one row at a time. To this side, I need to remind you, follow the rules of the road. If there's a, if a, a, a red light, stop. If there's a stop sign, stop. So follow the rules of the road. They may have the traffic lights on flashers. I couldn't guarantee that. So congratulations, Orono High School Class of 2020. Never forget you guys. Thanks for your patience, everyone.